Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at a new black ship that's out and it's currently in a crate because where else would it be? <laughs> but um, uh, just as a prefix, so why am I reviewing these ships if they are in gambling crates? Well, there are people who like to, you know, pay money for gambling for pixel ships and I'm not, you know, who am I to tell them not to? It's everybody's own, everybody's own decision. There are also people who don't do that. And I presume that given the price for these crates... Uh, actually, let's have a look at very quick look at these crates. These crates cost 2,000 gold per piece. And the chance of getting the ship is 3%. Which um, means, you know, you potentially have to pay a very, very significant amount of gold in order to, well, to, you know, to get the ship. So... What, why am I still doing this if the majority of you is probably not going to spend their money on this? Well, you might be facing one in battle, for starters. So it's actually pretty good to know what's going on. And once again, I'm not someone to prescribe you what you're going to do with your own money. So that all out of the way. Uh, let's have a look at the ship. So it's a Friedrich der Große and it is an H-class battleship. And it's black. <laughs> well, mostly. If you take the camel off, it's completely black. So yeah, you go. Uh, it's, a, it's very pretty. I mean, as black ships go, I'm not always 100% convinced of these things, but, you know, uh, it's a Friedrich der Große. So, the Friedrich is a bit of a... I would say not super popular ship. So a lot of people in the German battleship line are stopping at the Bismarck, because the Bismarck is an excellent Tier 8 uh, battleship. She is. She actually existed, <laughs> unlike some of the some of the other ships. And um, the difference between the Bismarck and the Friedrich der Große aren't aren't that uh, big of a gap as it is between the Friedrich and the Große Kurfürst at Tier Ten. So the Tier Nine matchmaking is is always a bit of an issue because while this doesn't matter that much for the other classes, for destroyers and cruisers, can't say about aircraft carriers because it's not something I frequently play, so I don't have an actual informed opinion about these things. But uh, for battleships, the difference between tier 9 and 10 is very, very pronounced. So, uh, like the difference between um, uh, between an Iowa and a Montana, the, uh, the difference between an Izumo and a Yamato, the difference between the Friedrich der Große and the Große Kurfürst. So let's have a very quick look at some stats and I'll explain, you know, what I'm trying to talk about. So first of all, let's have a look between the Bismarck and the Friedrich der Große. Now, you see they have round about the same skill set on these things. And um, the the Friedrich gets better armor and gets a significantly better armor. I mean, this is this is nothing to sneeze at. This is very, very good armor, even by... Um, even by yeah by by battleship standards in tier nine or even in tier ten for some battleships, the Friedrich der Große is obviously not as maneuverable. Although it used to be worse, I think the uh, time to full speed was somewhere around 37, 38 seconds or something. So the engines have been buffed recently, but she's still not as maneuverable. And um, the guns are four hundred six millimeter instead of the three hundred eighties on the Bismarck. Uh, they do have a better range, and they do a bit more damage, but uh, they are... Well, you get into Tier 10 games. And uh, against very, very heavily armored ships in Tier 10, it can get very tricky. And also, well, you just get eight of them, but the usual German relatively good reload with the 19 seconds. The secondaries are mostly identical to what you would find on the Bismarck with a very slight improvement in range on the auto-secondaries. Other than that, well, it's pretty much the same thing. Only that this thing is, well, uh, well, you can see it here, is quite a bit bigger than the Bismarck. It's a very, very big target, and it's a Tier 9 ship. So this thing gets into Tier 10 games. And Tier 10 games used to be the only problem that you had were Yamatos. Now there are Vermonts and Shikishimas and all kinds of stuff that is shooting very, very big guns at you. So the jump between, if we look between the Friedrich der Große and the Große Kurfürst, the jump between tier 9 and tier 10 is very significant. So uh, the Kurfürst has one has a massive spike in armor and, and hit points as well. 
And while she is, well, obviously even worse in terms of maneuverability, she also gets 420mm main guns, which is once again a noticeable jump in terms of damage, in terms of everything else. And uh, other than that, also the, the Grosse Kurfürst gets the 128mm auto secondaries, and she gets more of them. So there's a there's an all around quite a bit of a jump between, uh, especially in terms of armor, because that is the primary stat for German battleships between tier nine and ten. Right. So what does that mean for for this ship then? Well, we haven't even looked at the Black Friedrich der Große yet. So let's start with that, and then we'll do another loop around uh, to what that what that actually means. The difference, uh, given it's a black ship, it's not going to be huge, but uh, instead of the uh, precise aim, she gets a rapid reload. And instead of the sonar, she gets a defensive AA. Now, this is a bit of a bummer because the sonar is, for a German battleship, an absolutely essential tool. Because if you need to push, and you need to push into things that have torpedoes, then the sonar is, on something as as maneuverable as a Friedrich or a Großer Kurfürst, the sonar is almost indispensable because you need to be having sufficient warning time that the torpedoes are coming. So I would gladly trade that defensive AA, because it's also a def AA-1, so it gives 75% um, boost. I would gladly trade that back for the sonar, because I would uh, that would have been a much better choice, in my opinion. But it is what it is. So the black version gets a marginally larger amount of hit points. It's not much. It's not going to make a difference. Maneuverability is the same. Main guns are the same. The 150mm main secondaries are getting a range buff, which is welcome. And so do the 105mm auto secondaries. So she is a bit longer range on the secondaries. The AA is the same, uh, with the difference that you get a 75% buff when you sp uh, spin up the defensive AA, but that's not enough for the ship to be able to defend herself against uh, against carrier strikes, especially if it's tier 10 carriers. So not, not quite all that useful. So um, what is it about... What is it about tier, uh, tier 9 battleships in Tier 10 then? Well, most battleships, you have the option to play at range in, in, in Tier 10. If you're in a Tier 9 Izumo, or if you're in an Iowa, or if you're in any other Tier 9 battleship, and you don't have the armor to stand up to these big guns, and you don't necessarily have the firepower, you can still make yourself useful by just staying at maximum range, maybe drawing some fire, and um, you know shooting your guns. In a German battleship, that is not so much the case, because the German battleships are not meant for long-range gameplay. And uh, even worse, the Black Friedrich der Große doesn't get the precise aiming skill. <laughs> so uh, her long-range performance is not great, because these things are meant to fight at secondary range. And the secondary range is good. The problem is, in a tier 10 game, to get actually in secondary range of anything uh, is, is a big problem, because most of the time you'll be up against well, Yamatos and Vermonts and all other kinds of things that, even with her armor, can make her life very, very short. Uh, and you're up against destroyers, a lot of them. Well, that's also true in Tier 9, but Tier 10 meta, depending on the server, can be extremely defensive. With lots of camping going on and lots of ships, just lots of especially battleships, just firing at long range. So for, for most Tier 9 battleships, Tier 10 games aren't great, but they're doable. For the Friedrich der Große, Tier 10 games are painful. So oftentimes I find myself just, you know, uh, doing what I can to be useful to my team, but I don't usually do very well in Tier 10 games in this thing, unless the enemy team does something stupid or, you know, uh, plays aggressively, in which case once you get into secondary range, she can very much stand up to, uh, st stand up even to Tier 10 ships, especially with the rapid reload, because that actually is more useful at the ranges that you normally want to play this ship. So if she gets into a tier 8 game, or well, a tier 9 game, then she is an absolute monster of a ship. So let's have a very quick look through the setup. Uh, I have spec her for secondaries, so I'm, I am getting the uh, secondary reload. You can go with the improved main belt. It does make a little bit of a difference, but it's not huge. And I believe that if you come under concentrated long-range fire from things like Yamatos of Vermonts, it's not going to make a massive amount of difference. So uh, having the secondaries better, having the improved secondaries um, just gives you more fun in in in, in games where you are top tier. But they're they're both valid choices. I, I have uh, ships on my personal account uh, as well with the with the armor setup, so they are completely valid choices. Uh, Equipment-wise, there's a, the secondary button mode two 
is kind of what I generally uh, recommend for uh, for for the for the German chips because it gives both secondary range and a secondary dispersion. And then together with the elite bonus and the relative commander skills, your your secondaries are quite a menace, actually. Uh, I would thoroughly recommend the deck protection mod, even though the canonical build seems to be more on the propulsion. But um, once again, you are, you're playing, you, you'll you be faced with things like Smolensk and top tier carriers and all kinds of things. So I do recommend that because the, uh, the fire protection on these ships is traditionally not very good. And I have the steering gear mod in slot 3. Bringing us to the commander. So given as a tier, it's act I have actually put a tier ten command, a level ten commander in because I did want to play with the master reloader skill. Other than that, uh, it's it's not quite the traditional German setup, but relatively close. So you, the difference being that you don't want to take the recon and surveillance because why well, would you? Because you don't have a sonar, and you obviously don't need the marksman skill. But in return, you're going to have the master reloader. Uh, you could. Always take Adrenaline Rush. I kind of try to go a bit more for survivability in this ship, especially that you, well, you know, you will be in, you, you might be confronted with tier 10 games. And once again, she is a very, very large target. Uh, yeah, one of the really important skills is the Close Quarters Combat Expert, because it once again gives 15% additional dispersion bonus for the secondaries, and you do get both sets, and they are very good, and you should be using them. And if you don't, why are you in a German ship? <laughs> And you can have uh, you can take the survivalist because you don't necessarily need a fourth rapid reload, but you can if you want to and if you're so inclined. Uh, you could kind of get the you could think about getting def AA uh, expert and to get the battlefield support for an additional uh, air defense alert. Um, I personally find it doesn't make a huge difference because it's just an a defensive AA one, and uh, yeah, it's not it's not that it's not that much of it. So. Um, let's get into some games, shall we? Actually, before we get into some games, I completely forgot to look at the camo. <laughs> We're actually going to play with the historical camo. I think I have one game without and one game with. Uh, the reason I'm putting it in is because... Uh, where is it? The the crate actually has a 6% uh, chance to get the historical camo. So if someone's gambling for the, for the ship, uh, there's a 50% higher chance to actually get the camo <laughs> than to get the ship itself, which is um, all kinds of sneaky in its own way, I, I would say. But because, um, you know, once you have the camo, <laughs> why wouldn't you keep going? But yeah, so there's a fair chance that somebody who actually gets the ship out of the crate actually gets the camo as well. So we are going to, I, I, I did have one battle with the camo as well. Uh, gives us hit points, gives us range, gives us dispersion on the main battery, and gives us torpedo damage reduction. Torpedo damage reduction, okay. I mean, it's 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 not a it's not a great amount uh, to begin with, but we can take it. Uh, the dispersion is obviously nice, and main battery firing range is is also nice. But these are not ranged ships, so while we take it and it can improve your things a little bit, I wouldn't say it is an essential thing. So if you happen to have the Friedrich der Große without the historical camo out of the crate. Um, it's okay. You don't absolutely have to take it, I believe. All right, now let now we're going to look at some battle footage. And like I mentioned, um, I'm not actually going to show you tier ten games because tier ten games in this ship are just utterly frustrating. Just um, chalk them off, the same as you would do in the Tech Tree Fre uh, Freddy, Freddy. Sometimes you get lucky, like one out of ten games, but mostly if you're up against tier ten players who are playing standard meta and who are playing their battleships at long range. Um, you're just not gonna have any fun in tier 10 games most of the time, so um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have tier 9 games because that's a lot more interesting and fun and um, something for you to see. So just be aware of that. Anyway, first game we are up against Minnesota, Izumo, uh, Richelieu, Kansas, Neptune, Takao, and Kagro, and we're playing base cup on Encounter. Encounter is the Lemming Train map because. Uh, we're cross-spawning, so there's a three group of ships up in the northern northern end of the map and the four group of enemy ships in the enemy cap. So who do I have with me? I have a Jutland and an Amagi, which means um, the Amagi is probably not feeling like rushing forward, but if the Jutland is going scouting, then I'll come along and push this flank. Let's, let's, see, let's see what we're doing. Ideally, the, um, the rest of my team would be uh, playing defensive there, and they're actually calling that out and say, okay. So they are going to play defensive, but um, I'm, going to pl I'm going to start pushing because the Jutland is as well scouting here. So if the rest, if 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 my team can 
defend the cup against the group of three coming in on the other side and I am in a top tier breakthrough battleship, then we should have a fair chance of breaking through the enemy defense on this side, even though we are under strength. The only thing I have to worry about aren't there is the Kagro. Of course the Kagro is on my side of the battlefield. Why am I not surprised? Okay, uh, shots out at the Kagro. I do have the armor piercing loaded, but uh, I think he's a little bit faster than that. Uh, yeah, and dispersion says nope. But I have to stop now in case, because I am probably in torpedo range of the Kagro. So just in case he comes around, the Utland also is slowing down. But we do have an Izumo to shoot at back there. And um, this should be probably about far enough that I have to go. So let's go forward again and uh, start lighting up the Izumo. I think the Neptune is there as well, but I don't think the Neptune will have range with the torpedoes. Can't remember what the torpedo range is on the Neptune, but let's light up the Izumo. And at this range, uh, yeah, the guns aren't gonna be doing a great deal, but uh, that's also not the point. And the Kagero looks like he's not coming our, so our way, he's going through the middle. So that leaves the Minnesota, the, uh, the Neptune and the Izumo over there. So that is something that I'm happy to push into. So forward we go, and uh, there's the Neptunes, see we can punish him a little bit, he's sitting out there, and uh, I'm just checking what that Kagero is doing, if he's coming back my way, but yeah, this is what I can do to Neptunes when I can hit, when I can hit them in the broadside. Okay, and then these, uh, these three are focusing at me, which is good, because uh, I have the thickest armor of all of us here, so please keep shooting at me, I am perfectly happy with that. Also, this is just normal caliber shell, uh, shell fire that is something I can sustain easily. And the Izumo definitely cannot, especially once I get close enough that I can actually do something about it. So uh, the rest of my team still trying to hold the cut back there, but one of our destroyers seems to have gotten bored and is gone through the middle. This is a little bit unfortunate, but we don't need them here. I, I'm, I am on full speed at this point because the Minnesota and the Neptune are both behind the island, so they've taken themselves out of the battle temporarily, which is uh, very accommodating of them. Uh, Izumo is not going to run into those torps, but he doesn't need to. The thing is, the Izumo is in my <laughs> secondary range, and if you are in the secondary range of a German battleship, uh, in something like the Izumo, uh, you're generally not in a good position, let me put it that way. So, um, yeah, we're just going to shred through the Izumo. I do have to be a little bit careful because the Neptune's around the corner. And there come some torpedoes. These are probably Neptune torps. And, yeah, that's the end of the Izumo. Uh, the Kagro has come back as well. So we've got Kagro and Neptune around the corner. Right about now, it w and a full health in Minnesota. Now, right about now, it would be great to have a sonar. <laughs> but I don't, so I'm going to have to make do without. So first of all, we're going to start lighting up the Minnesota. And um, we are going to have to be very, very careful here, because, yeah, there's the Kagro. The Neptune is not in a position to torpedo me, because he's bow in. The thing is, if he's not, if he wasn't bow in, then um, then he would uh, th then <laughs> he would be in trouble. So he's smoking up, so he's probably going to start getting torpedoes away. So I'm already reversing at this point, because uh, he's going to use his smoke. Once again, if I had a Hydro, this would have been really useful to just spot the Neptune and blap him out of the map. <laughs> But yeah, there he is, so he's got torpedoes away, and there comes the Kagero, and he's probably reloaded, and there's, he's now um, point, he's now sitting broadside onto Friedrich der Große at point blank range. Okay, this is with the Kagero torps, these are the Neptune torps, I might take uh, two here from the Neptune torps, but um, that's again something that I can sustain. Uh, and yeah, so, and now the Neptune um, is going to have to, well, if he wants to stay there, be my guest, really. But uh, he seems to be shooting at someone else. Yeah, he's trying to kill the Uplant, but he is giving broadside to Friedrich der Große, and that's not something that you can do, at least not for very long, because even if I'm down a little bit on hit points, uh, and yeah, the Neptune has just realized that um, this is not a wise position to be in, so he's buggering off, because otherwise he would have been dead about now. Meanwhile, the Amagi has made himself useful and, killed, and, and brought the Minnesota down, but, uh, but at a terrible cost, because the Minnesota has got... Lots of guns, and now those hurt. Okay, there comes the Kagero around the corner. Uh, but he is in, uh, once again in my secondary range, and the auto-secondary is already opening up at him. And uh, that is a very, very dead Kagero. So, uh, Ploink, now, uh, Jutland, if you go for the cap, you're the fastest among the bunch here. Um, so go f because we are being capped out, uh, there's only one battleship back there. They are down to three ships, but... Okay, one of them's over there, so I'm calling Jutland, um, or anyone really. I mean, the Yamagi is almost in the capture circle, and the Yamagi is pretty quick. So the Jutland is probably going to make himself useful and try... You don't need to defend our cup, I think we have... If the Yamagi gets into the capture circle... Oh, and the Gascogne takes out the Taco. Well done, Gascogne, well done. 
that was a good defense of the Gasconia back home. So now there's just the Richelieu. And I, we do have to be careful that the Richelieu isn't going to kill the Amagi because we are not currently holding any of the capture circles. And even though they're down to two ships, we still need to make sure. And yeah, the Cleveland is, is going back to help out as well, just in case. And the Jutland is rushing the Richelieu, pushing him away and, and hopefully drawing some fire. And that is exactly the right thing to do because uh, uh, the Gascogne is still viciously defending at home and making sure that our capture circle doesn't get capped out. At this point, we are far enough in the capture process that they wouldn't be able to cap us out before we cap. So uh, this one is safe. Well done. I am just rushing back um, in case I can do something and help out with the battleship back there. But uh, right now, I'm just uh, just dropping some more shots at the Richelieu. But we've done our part. We've broken through their defense. And... Uh, and we, we are base trading, but because of because we are ahead on kills, uh, this is this is going to go in our favor. So yeah, in the last 30 seconds, I'm just going to try and respot that battleship over there, but I don't think I am actually going to be able to until the game ends and we are um, we are going out on points. Plus, the Richelieu is now getting uh, getting rushed by the Jutland, so he's got different problems than trying to prevent the cap the capping of uh, of their own base. So this all worked out in the end. And the Jutland takes out the Richelieu. Well done, which only leaves the battleship in our cup, and that's the game. Yeah, so if you are top tier, um, this works really nicely. So let's see where we came in the team. We did 94,000 points of damage and uh, earned ourselves the MVP in the whole thing. Uh, yeah, in, in tier 9 games, this is very much something that you can do. So it's not just tier 8, uh, tier 8 battleships, it's also tier 9 battleships that you actually have absolutely no problem of dealing with. It's the tier 10s where it gets difficult. And then once again, for battleships, that is actually the problem. I got two citadels, I think, on a Neptune. And uh, yeah, let's do that again. <laughs> in the second battle, it's once again a tier 9 battle, as I mentioned. We're up against uh, Izumo, Key, North Carolina, Neptune, Baltimore, Yugumo, and Lightning. And it's Atlantic, not my favorite map, but we will see what we can do. Uh, yeah, base capture there. Uh, easy for destroyers to sneak through the middle occasionally, but we do have a bunch of cruisers on both teams, so it's probably hopefully not too bad. And I am actually spawning on a good side here. I prefer this side because you have more open space to maneuver and not so many small islands that destroyers can ambush you in uh, because once again she doesn't get the, the sonar so what i'm going to do is who am i got with me i've got kagero and seattle with me perfect good combo so let's uh the seattle should be able just by his sheer presence to deter enemy destroyers and um i can deal with anything else <laughs> so <laughs> uh, that uh, that suits me just well so we are going to head over towards that island. Now the destroyers are, or the, the enemy ships are either going to come around the left or the right side of that island. But there is someone going to come around this island. Almost like 80, 80, 80 to 90 percent of the battle, someone's going to come around. So I'm just waiting to be spotted. Uh, this is the one where I've got the historical camo on, by the way. Okay, I'm now spotted. So it's either it's either this corner or it's the other corner. So let's see if we can just ping the team, warn them that I've been spotted. It's either this or that corner there, but uh, the cargo is on the other corner, so he should be able to see whoever is coming. Well, he just jumped backwards. I'm not sure what happened there. Bit of lag. Uh, oh, okay, so it was this corner. So it's the Xianyang that is actually coming around here. And uh, I don't know if the, if the Seattle... No, the Seattle isn't running his radar. Would have been nice, actually, at this range. But uh, yeah, the Xianyangs uh, had one look at the Seattle and uh, decided, nope, <laughs> I am not going to go this way. And it looks, doesn't look like there were torpedoes on the way, so um, good. So I'm, I'm just going to keep going. See, for the Seattle, is a, this is a great position because he can lob this island. And uh, okay, what do we got? We've got uh, Baltimore, North Carolina coming around this corner. So the Kagero goes, uh, obviously goes unspotted. I don't think the Baltimore gets a sonar, so he drops some torpedoes, but I don't, I'm not sure who these were meant for, if these were meant for the Baltimore. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to hit the Baltimore from there. So Baltimore is my primary target, but he's moving away. So let's um, deter the NC from coming any closer and getting shots off at my Seattle, because my Seattle is kind of sitting there nicely, and uh, but but he is sitting broadside on. So if the North Carolina pushes anywhere forward, he's going to endanger the Seattle. But he's shooting at me, which is much preferable. Uh, yes, please keep shooting, shooting at me. Especially at this range, the North Carolina cannot hit anything. And there's a third battleship coming. So we've got... Xianyang, North Carolina, Izumo, and uh, and Baltimore to play with. 
Okay, Baltimore is going behind an island, but he looks like he's going to hunt our Kagero. So I'm I'm just going to get ready to slap him in the side um, while drawing fire from the Izumo and the North Carolina. I can take that for a little bit. Not 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 for a long time, but if the Baltimore decides he wants to come around, and there's the Xianyang, so the Seattle deals with the Xianyang. Meanwhile, we're citadeling the North Carolina, and just uh, making sure that Baltimore doesn't suspect anything. There comes Baltimore, and he's after the Kagero. Surprise! <laughs> You're giving broadside to a Corsa Kurfürst who's been paying attention. So um, yeah, good night, Mr. Baltimore. <laughs> this is not something you get away with twice. <laughs> so. Uh, or even once for that matter. So that guy is now very, very dead. And we are uh, we are then able to turn around. There he goes. Uh, we're then able to turn around. We have preserved our Kagero, which is generally a useful thing to have, especially if you're dealing with two battleships. Even though one of them is tier 8, uh, it's still two of them. And um, the Seattle has uh, seems to have murdered the Xianyang and has is, is buggering off, which is wise, because he doesn't want anywhere where he can be shot at. But the Kagro obviously now has nothing to fear because he can literally just go and stealth top these guys. And this should be Seattle High Explosive coming in, so focus fire. Yep, Izumo shooting at me, perfect. Keep shooting at me, don't shoot at my Seattle, yeah? Because I can do this to, to you and you can't. <laughs> so now we're putting the engine up on full speed and we're just gonna rush these two guys because um, the Izumo is about to run into all those torpedoes. Because he's in a, he doesn't even know that the Kagro is here, and he's lost his Baltimore. And I can do that again to the Izumo, so... <laughs> it's all fun in games, and... Um, yeah, if you see a German battleship rushing you, and you're suddenly in secondary gun, uh, gun, for gun range, uh, things don't tend to go so well, so well for you, even if you are a top tier battleship. So that should be the end of the Izumo, and now it's, just, it's the North Carolina's turn. Who suddenly finds that he has run out of friends. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I see no reason to slow down, so uh, either he has accepted his fate or he's just trying to get as much damage in as he can, and at this range, even the North Carolina can miss, and uh, these guns can hurt at this range, so uh, it's not a foregone conclusion, but uh, yeah, once again, these uh, these secondaries are no joke. I'm damaconing the single fire here, because most likely the secondaries aren't going to set me on fire again that quickly, and I don't think that North Carolina is going to live very long after this, so shots out, and I'm just going to steer around him and let my secondaries finish him off, uh, just, just to, to outturn his, his turrets, uh, such that he's not going to be able to get another shot off if I am lucky. And uh, yeah, it looks like he is very really dead now. And the Kagro actually takes him out. Well done, Kagro. So uh, yeah, that is this side cleaned up, 109,000 points of damage, <laughs> and, and uh, fun has been had, nice which, is, uh, which is something that you can do in tier 9 games. So once again, uh, the Friedrich is a very special case among the battleships because you just can't do anything at long range, especially with this version because she doesn't get the precise aim. And um, you're, really, you're really just also wasting most of the potential. And in tier 10 games, you very rarely actually get a chance to do what you're good at. But in tier 9 games, I would say this ship is one of the best tier 9 battleships in tier 9 games uh, to deal with pretty much anything she comes up against. So um, yeah, uh, while we're just waiting for that uh, for that minute to take over. So um, should you get this ship? Well, it's uh, I would say if you like playing the Friedrich der Große, uh, the 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 Tech Tree version is perfectly fine. It's a German battleship. the The power is in the secondaries. The rapid reload is neat. And um, yes, you can you, you can hammer out some more damage with the main guns at close range. So it's not a bad thing. But in return, the Tech Tree one gets a precise aim, which means you get a little bit more shells on target while you're actually in the run-up towards your... Uh, or in the first half of the battle where you're still trying to find out where everybody is. So I think it's not a huge difference. The defensive AA is almost useless. And I actually prefer the, uh, the Sonar on the Tech Tree one. The secondaries have better range on this ship, which is nice. So it's definitely not a bad ship, uh, but you just have to be aware of these things. And uh, personally, uh, nah, <laughs> I'm not gonna. Even if it wasn't in a crate, I, I, I personally am not gonna bother because I already have the Gosa Kur first, and uh, and I am very much happy to play in that thing and in the Bismarck. But uh, tier nine, especially in this ship, can be a bit of a questionable thing. So uh, yeah, that's the Black Friedrich der Große. So even if you're not interested in a crate and uh, not interested to actually get the ship, um, you can always get the Tech Tree one for free 
And if you're facing one in battle, uh, just be aware of what these things are capable of, especially if you're not in a tier 10 battleship. That's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.